Thank you. Senator Hogan. We get that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Secretary Turk, uh, you note that uh, China is, is, you know, working very diligently to copy and take a lot of the capabilities and research that uh, you're de that is being developed at our national laboratories. How much, in your opinion, how much have they taken or copied? And are the national labs really able to protect themselves, not only in terms of the information they have, but also as they hire people? Don't they have to be very careful whom they hire and how they hire and, and uh, so forth so that they know that you know, that information isn't going from employees to China or other uh, actors that uh, you know, have uh, adverse interests to our country? Well, thanks for the question, uh, and the answer is uh, we need to be very aware and we need to have a layered strategy to deal with these uh, security challenges. Um, so we'll even put in place uh, specific prohibitions. Uh, if you've worked in a foreign talent program in China, for instance, but it's not just China, then you can't work in a Department of Energy lab. So we've got specific restrictions in place where we see particular risk. Secondly, we've adopted and now we're annually updating something called our Science and Technology Risk Matrix which looks at particularly sensitive technologies. AI is one of the six particularly sensitive technologies uh, that we do an extra screening and make sure that we're uh, taking care of those sensitive technologies uh, in particular. And then third, we've also got counterintelligence experts uh, in our field offices that cover all of our national laboratories that are uh, looking into any allegations and making sure that we're running down uh, all leads along those lines. Uh, but we want to attract top talent in our U.S. national labs. We want to have that expertise coming, and we benefit from that, uh, public and the private sector. Many of those, over 90% of AI PhDs who come and work in our labs and come and get their PhDs here stay more than five years, uh, so we benefit from that. But we've got to have eyes wide open uh, and have a real balance here so that we try to get it, uh, get it right and update it over time, too. When you kind of went right into my next question is then what about people that leave? get recruited away, you know, because they've got all that incredible knowledge. And what if they get recruited to, you know, a, either a rogue actor or a, or a country like China or somebody that then is trying to get the information that way? You're just hiring them away from you. Well, and it's not just happening with Chinese nationals. Uh, it's other countries' nationals That's who mean, are not being just recruited mm -hmm. uh, elsewhere also. So we've got to be eyes wide open on the front end, right? If there's a particular risk of an individual that we think could take uh, some of their experience, they learn in a national lab and take it back to China or take it to Russia or other countries that mean us uh, challenge in the world, then we've got to uh, have restrictions and um, those kinds of screens in place, just I mentioned uh, along those lines. And then we've got to um, you know, balance the benefits that we get from all these world-class talent coming here uh, with the risks that we're going to have from some folks deciding that they want to go work elsewhere, they want to uh, take what they learn and, and take it elsewhere. So we've just got to be very vigilant and have a very layered approach. And we've empowered a group of experts across the labs and headquarters to make sure that we are continually improving not only our risk matrix, but how we do things more generally. Yeah, a real challenge, no question. It's a real it. challenge, there's no doubt because about it. Because you need the talent. But you have to screen it on the front end. You've got to be careful not to lose it on the back end. I mean, incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult. Along uh, kind of uh, in a similar way, but um, a little bit different, I want to ask both uh, Ms. Puglisi and uh, also uh, Dr. Stevens, what about people just flat out copying? Okay, so you developed some great AI product, whatever. How about somebody just taking it and copying it? I mean, you see, we see that with, look at what uh, Iran's doing with drones. I mean, they, they obviously just, and other countries too, just copying our technologies. It may be inferior, but they are just copying it in many respects. How do you prevent rogue actors from doing that kind of thing? Or can you? That's correct, Senator. That's a very difficult. I mean, challenge. China's made a living off copying and stealing our stuff. Right. Um, and... Yeah, I'd, I'd like to actually have a couple comments on your, on your first question because I think sure. it's important. Um, well, with the permission of the, well, the chairman's gone, so yeah, oh, go okay. crazy. <laughs> go wild. <laughs> they, they kind of wrote their role into Yeah, exactly. We can do whatever we want now. I'm, sit, I'm sitting in for the chairman. You oh, okay. Say. Take it all back. Yeah. Okay. Fellow um, governor, we've got to mind our P's and Q's. The is, is, is very much a challenge, um, and, but it's the technological know-how 
I think I think a lot of our existing uh, mm. mitigation strategy is focused on things, right? Something that is tangible. Um, it's the technological know-how of how do you actually use that. So you can copy something or I can translate something. I still don't understand what it means. And that's why that talent piece is so important. And I would venture to say that our system really isn't set up for this particular challenge that we have today. We're, we're pretty much, we're set up to fight the Soviets. We look for intelligence officers, we look for a direct military end use, and we have very narrow laws around economic espionage, which we could, um, we could discuss en, en masse for a long time. Um, but what's being targeted is, are things that are earlier and earlier in the development cycle um, that are beyond most of our mitigation strategy. And that is gonna be an ongoing challenge if we think about how do we find ways that we still enhance and keep um, investing in that early development cycle work, which is such an essential part of the DOE labs, while at the same time you know, finding those ways to, to protect that. Um, and then that kind of gets at the, the workforce, it gets at technological know-how, it gets how do we then um, you know, find new ways to face this challenge. I can tell you've been Thank thinking you. about it. It's good that you're very thoughtful about that, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I can tell you're something you're working on, and that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator.